My name is Maura Gamble. I'm a permaculture teacher, designer and writer. With my family, I live a simple, debt-free life in a permaculture eco-village in the Australian subtropics. My edible landscape is low maintenance, abundant and a great sense of joy. We've built our own house, a modular house which collects all its own water and power and processes its wastes. In this series of films, I'd like to show you around. Hi, I'm Morag and I'm from Our Permaculture Life. Uh, this is my permaculture gardener today. I wanted to show you a worm tower. We've got a whole lot of different worm towers all throughout the garden, as well as a lot of different other compost systems. But this one I love because it's just so simple and it's really a fantastic thing to add into a small garden, a raised garden bed, or onto any vegetable bed that you're really wanting to keep the fertility up to. It's as simple as sinking a pipe into the ground. Underneath it has holes. I'll show you that in a minute how to set one up. Sink that into the ground and then just feed it from the top. So add in your food scraps, your coffee grounds, your tea leaves, ripped up paper, tissues, sorbents, all of that just goes straight into here. The worms come up and process it, draw it down into the soil and all the castings and the liquid just goes directly into the soil. It just couldn't be simpler. Inside here is the, the worm tower. So we have a, some newspaper covering the top of the, the worms to keep them nice and and cool and also to add carbon into the mix. Underneath that, we reach down. We should find some of those. Let's see, I might need to dig a bit deeper. Oh, look at that ridge stuff. Beautiful. It's getting very nice. Oh, here we go. Starting to find them. So they're working on processing. That's actually coffee grounds turning deep dark black. Wonderful. So I'll put that back in there with the worms. And I'll add some more food into that one shortly. But I'm going to make a new one now. So I'm about to install a worm tower into this section of garden. It's a new piece of garden. It really hasn't had much attention at all. It was actually a quite compacted site because it's where we did a lot of building from. There was concrete mixed here and all sorts. So I really want to try and build up the, the soil fertility and the openness of the soil here. So installing a worm farm is a really great idea. So right in the middle of this garden, I've dug a hole. Um, and this is probably the easiest type of worm tower to build. Quite a nice diameter of pipe. And then we're gonna bury it so that the holes all go underneath the soil. So I just used a five millimeter drill to drill holes at regular intervals all the way around. And so what this means is that the worms can go through this into the soil if they need to move out of this, if it gets too wet or if it gets too rich or um, even to take the worm, other worms can come in and take the materials out too. So this is going to be buried into the soil right down to the bottom. I'll put a little bit of a, a bedding mix of compost at the base and then put a really good um, solid mix, um, a good handful of um, composting worms. And you really do need the composting worms, the red worms, the tiger worms, or the blue worms. Earthworms will eventually come and take this in, but it'll break down much more quickly if you add in the compost worms too, and then they'll be working together. So I'm just going to put this into my hole here. Make sure that the holes are actually going to be below the level of the soil. So I might just dig a little bit out just to make sure it's right down nice and deep. There we are. And then just press that in. Make sure it's nice and level. And then just backfill. And you don't want to compress it too much otherwise, or compact it too much, otherwise the worms won't be able to move through very easily. Just put that all the way around. Bring the mulch all the way back around too. So you really want this to be as cool as possible for the worms so that they well, on a nice hot day, the worms stay nice and cool in there. Might put a little bit more around there. Okay, that's nice and firm. So I have some compost here, some almost finished compost. I'm going to put down as the base, as the bedding for the worms. They'll be really happy in that just to get them started. Nice big handful of compost worms to toss into the mix. In they go. Just put a bit of extra of their castings in. Maybe a bit more compost just to help them get going. 
And the final thing always in any of the mixes is to put a handful of mulch in on the top. Oh, lost the worms, put those in too. Put that in on top. Always put the hay on top because it helps to prevent the flies from coming in and also helps to keep a nice stable temperature. So the last thing for this is to put a pot on top to stop other animals from getting in and also to protect their worms from having too much rain coming in. And that's it. Bring the mulch around it and I'll come and check them in about a week and maybe give them some more food. So as I mentioned before, we have lots of different worm farms in our system, uh, from worm towers to worm farms. What we're building here now is a, is a larger scale worm farm. We collected this beautiful uh, double sink for the local tip and we've got some old bits of building material from around our house and putting it together so we can really multiply our worm population uh, to be able to spread them further out through the garden and also to support young Hugh's um, worm tower enterprise that he's um, starting, eight-year-old Hugh. Um, so we've got um, Alejandro here from Colombia, he's woofing in our house and he's constructing it. You want to tell us a bit about what you're doing? Yeah, basically we just uh, have the double sink and uh, we're making with uh, this piece of wood like the frame and then some legs to make it high enough uh, to even kids to work. It's like around 90 centimeters tall. Uh, yeah, we just have missing like finish the legs and put the lid to finish covering it. That's it. So I've been wanting to make one of these for a really long time. I also have a bathtub that's waiting to be made into something similar. So I'm imagining a whole series of sinks and bathtubs and once we haven't made it out of an old fridge. So it really depends on what kind of resources you have available. So next time, um, come back to our Permaculture Life uh, channel and we'll see this one in action. Come back to learn more about my Permaculture Lifestyle home, garden and community. I'll also be visiting really interesting people and places. Find out more stories and information about my courses and workshops on my blog, ourpermaculturelife.blogspot.com.